I'm going to show you how to get the government to buy an investment property for you. An investment property that's going to kick off, in my estimation, more than $60,000 a year in pure passive cash flow. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the show where I work with people like you one-on-one, -on -one. people like my man Way, New York City investor. Works with me one-on-one -on -one to build rental property portfolio. We're doing a lot of short-term rentals. Now, if you're watching this and you're not way, you're watching this video later down the road, okay? When I work with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, I send these videos up privately. And then later when the deal's no longer available, I release them publicly on Holden Wise TV so we could all learn and see what's going on, right? So if you want to work with me just like this, you want personalized videos like Way is getting, send my team an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you. We'll talk to you about it. Otherwise, sit back, chill with your phone, and learn a little bit because I got government money, folks. $60,000 a year is what I believe you're going to make every year off of this investment. On average, of course, no guarantees, right? I can't make any guarantees. That'd be crazy. I wouldn't do that, right? There's variables to this stuff, okay? It's a living, breathing thing. It's a real estate investment. Anybody telling you otherwise doesn't know what they're talking about or they're just lying to you, right? But I believe it's reasonable to expect $62,000 a year in profit, and I'm going to show you how I can get the government to pay for it right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. How can we get the government to pay for this deal, right? That's what I'm talking about, okay? I think this makes a hell of a lot of sense for a lot of people. I think a lot of people don't understand that you can do stuff like this. Don't understand that the government at some time is not trying to fight you. In fact, the government could be helping you, right? This particular property, 2078 West 44th, Cleveland. 44113, okay? You might not think of Cleveland when you're thinking about luxury real estate. You might not think about Cleveland when you're thinking about short-term rental properties, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of investments in Cleveland, many of which are low-income Section 8 rentals. We do a lot of that. It's where my bread's buttered. That's where I made the majority of my money, okay? I'm not trying to say uh, that that aspect of what a lot of you have heard about Cleveland does not exist. That's where I make the most of my money, right? But there are other, other types of ways you can invest in the Cleveland market that don't involve low-income renting, one of which is new construction, short-term rentals, Airbnb, VRBO, while getting the government, while getting Cleveland to pay for it, right? And this, this is a prime example. Brand new home, just got built, okay? And that's key, right? First of all, the home's beautiful, okay? Look at this sucker. This, this is a nice home, obviously, right? Everything is mint because it's brand spanking new, right? Just a beautiful home, right? And that's what we need. We need to present a beautiful luxury home, right? Part of the reason this works is because the home is brand new and beautiful. The other part of the reason that this investment is going to work is because of the neighborhood, right? Cleveland wants this neighborhood to continue to gentrify. This is one of the hottest neighborhoods in Cleveland, okay? This is a gentrification friggin', I don't know, friggin' gentrification orgy, man. I don't know even how to describe it, but this is where the gentrification happens, folks. Nice unfinished basement. You don't need to worry about the basement, though, right? Everything else is friggin' beautiful, okay? Now, Let's pull this bad boy up, okay? Let's pull up the map, folks. Let's pull up the map, all right? When you hear about gentrification in Cleveland, it's happening in Edgewater, Detroit Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont, right? This one right here in between Detroit Shoreway and Tremont, okay? And it's kind of like right there in Ohio City, too. It's kind of like all up in the, the center of the action. Another neighborhood I really, really like in Cleveland, the Clark Fulton neighborhood. Now, 
If you guys watch some of my other content, I talk about Clark Fulton and all the money that's going into Clark Fulton right now. Billion dollars from Metro Health, another like 40 or 60 million from the Regional Transit Authority. And I love Clark Fulton for uh, investors looking to buy low income properties and hoping for speculation. Why? Because Clark Fulton borders all the good stuff. Trima, Ohio City, Detroit, Shoreway, Edgewater, right? So we're already here with the gentrification. And I believe this is on the upswing, right? So you should never try to do a short term rental in Clark Fulton, at least not today. I think it's way too high risk. You got to move up to one of these neighborhoods, which is where we are, right? And this is why it works so well. This is where the city's going to help you. This is where I'm going to give you that carrot I've been talking about, talking about getting the city to pay for it. The reason those neighborhoods have gentrified, okay, is because Cleveland wants them to. They've invested a ton of money, and they're giving everybody, everybody like you, 15-year tax abatements, people, okay? Think about this. The tax rate, almost 3%. It's 2.79, but let's just call it 3, okay? Let's call it 3 for ease of math. If you have a house... Worth three hundred eighty-four thousand. Let's just say four hundred thousand for ease of math. Three, six, nine, twelve, twelve thousand dollars a year for ten years. That's what is that? One hundred and twenty-two thousand plus another five. That's fucking I don't know, like sixty. It's like a hundred eighty grand, roughly, right? Hundred eighty grand is what the city is going to give you. You don't have to pay that back. You buy the investment. They don't charge you the taxes. That's it. 15 years. We take a neighborhood that is hot, that is trendy, which is where people want to go when they come to Cleveland. Believe it or not, we got a decent amount of stuff in Cleveland. I know y'all don't think about that, but we got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We got the Science Center. We got the Browns. We got the Indians. If you're really woke, I guess you can call them the Guardians. We got uh, the Cavs. We got all kinds of shit, right? Historically, Airbnb. 38% vacancy, right? 62% occupancy, okay? So there's a lot of people coming here to Cleveland, and they want to be in these neighborhoods close to all the stuff I just named, right? So you provide premium, beautiful, brand-new asset. A lot of you probably heard about the lead-based paint shit. If not, Google it. That's a whole nightmare for some rental property investors. You don't have to deal with that if you're doing brand-new construction, right? So what would the numbers look like on this thing? Well, we should be able to rent it for 400 bucks a night. 400 bucks a night easily okay that'd be 12,400 a month if we occupied it every day but we're not gonna occupy it every day although another thing we could do too is like some nice furnished short-term rentals for nurses that's that's popping too because cleveland also a hub for the medical industry metro health mentioned them earlier they're putting money into clark fulton we also got university hospitals cleveland clinic right Cleveland is one of like the top medical destinations, right? So we're always looking for traveling nurses. There's always a nursing shortage, right? My wife used to actually be a nurse, right? So I know a little bit about that industry, okay? A lot of fucking money housing a lot of these people for a lot of this stuff on a short-term basis, right? Now, all that said, I'm not going to give you a mathematical projection here on 100% occupancy. No, no, no. We're going to go with Airbnb's historical occupancy rate of 62%, even though we're also going to be focusing on uh, the furnished rentals for nurses. We're also going to be hitting up VRBO, other stuff, but just running it conservatively. 12.4 should come in the door, but I'm going to go ahead and factor in a 38% vacancy plus all of the other fixed and variable expense estimates. I believe after all that, it's reasonable to assume a $62,000 every year coming in on average. Now, as far as the cost of the investment, three eighty four nine. dollars that's what they want. That's what we got to give them. Obviously, no repairs. It's beautiful. It's ready to rock, but we do got to furnish it, okay? That was staged, okay? Staged photography there. So we actually have to put our own furniture in, twenty five dollars The investment's 400900 seeing as we ain't paying no taxes the cash flow is insane remember 62 g's comes in right project this out at a 39.3 percent cash on cash return a 15.2 cap rate and guess what year 15 comes right before you got to pay taxes again sell it it's in the most gentrified area of town so what do you think is probably going to happen if they keep injecting money and it keeps gentrifying folks that's probably going to be the market, the area, the place where prices appreciate. You talk about internal rate of return. What if you sold this sucker for a solid 100 Gs more than you bought it without paying them taxes for 15 years? It's a no-brainer. I love this investment, and I love the fact that we can work things out with the government, actually get the government to be on our side as rental property investors, right, with all the shit you see in the news 
about cancel rent this, eviction moratorium that. I mean, Jesus Christ, it feels like the government's attacking property owners. This is one of those scenarios uh, where the government is actually working in unison with property owners like us, and it works out good for everyone. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.